We have a triangle and the three X circles are drawn. They touch each of the sides here, here and here respectively. And we have to prove that this line, this line and this line intersect at one point. Let's label the sides A, B and C. And now we can use Chevel's theorem because we know that this segment's length is S minus B, this is S minus A, this is S minus C, S minus B, S minus A, and S minus C, where S is the semi-perimeter, A plus B plus C divided by 2. Chevel's theorem states that this line, this line, and this line intersect at one point, if and only if S minus B divided by S minus A, times S minus C divided by S minus B, times S minus A divided by S minus C, equals 1, which is given here. But note that in this expression, all the things cancel out. S minus B cancels out here, S minus C cancels out here, and S minus A cancels out here. Therefore, this expression always equals 1, and hence these three lines always intersect at one point. This point is called the Nagel point for the triangle. This is the optional problem. We have a triangle, and this is its Nagel point, meaning that this and this are the lines connecting the vertex of the triangle and the opposing tangency point of the X circle. So this X circle is tangent here, where the red line meets this line. Let this line intersect the in circle at this point, and now we have to prove that this green length equals this green length, from the tangency point to the Nagel point, and from this intersection point to the vertex of the triangle. And here's the solution. Let's call this segment X, the segment Z, and this segment Y. We have to prove that X equals Y. At this point, we can draw a tangent line to the in circle, and we know that this tangent line is parallel to this line because this point and this point are diametrically opposite points in the in-circle, meaning that the center of the in-circle is the midpoint of the segment defined by this point and this point. Now consider this triangle and this triangle. There are similar triangles because of the parallel lines. We have that this angle equals this angle and this angle equals this angle. And what's more, this is the x-circle of this triangle and this here is the corresponding x-circle of the larger triangle. So the two circles are corresponding elements in the two similar triangles. Also, this segment x and this segment x plus z plus y are corresponding elements in the two similar triangles. And therefore the ratio x divided by x plus z plus y equals the coefficient of proportionality between the two similar triangles. And the ratio between the radius of this in-circle and this x-circle equals again the coefficient of proportionality between the two similar triangles because they are corresponding elements. Therefore, the ratio x divided by x plus y plus z equals the ratio of the x circle of the small triangle R divided by the x circle of the large triangle RC. Here I want to illustrate one more relation between the radius of the in circle and the radius of the x circle. Suppose we have a triangle, this is the in circle with radius R and this is the x circle with radius RC then if this side of the triangle is C and S is its semi-perimeter, then we know that this length is semi-perimeter minus C, and we know that this whole length from this tangency point to this vertex is semi-perimeter, and therefore this length here must be C. Now we can apply the intercept theorem for this triangle, where this line is parallel to this line because they're both perpendicular to this line, and we get that R divided by RC equals S minus C, divided by s. And this is how we get this equality here. Returning back here, let's call this side a, this side b, and this side c. Then we know that this distance is semi-perimeter minus b, this distance is also semi-perimeter minus b, the distance to the tangency point of the x-circle with this side, and this distance is s minus c. Then we can apply Menelaus theorem for this triangle and these three points which we know lie on a straight line. Then we get C divided by S minus B times Y divided by X plus Z times S minus B divided by S minus C equals 1. We can cancel out the S minus B and then rewrite this as X plus Z divided by Y equals C divided by S minus C. Now we can add 1 to both sides in this equality and get X plus Y plus Z divided by Y equals C plus S minus C divided by S minus C. And now the C here cancels out, so we get S divided by S minus C. But we know that S divided by S minus C is X plus Y plus Z divided by X. And so we can write it like this. But now X plus Y plus Z cancels out here and here, and we get that Y equals X as desired.